One of the barriers that kept me from Home Assistant for so long was that it didn't have a built-in integration with Alex A. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you that I found kind of this backdoor hack that is actually built in to Home Assistant that enabled me to integrate the two without paying a Nabucasa subscription and without having to create an Amazon developer account and Lambda functions and all that rigmarole. This took five minutes and you're going to be amazed. I'm going to explain it coming up. Welcome to Handy Dad TV. I'm Chris Heider, your virtual dad in the cloud. And if you're new to my channel, just click that subscribe button and the bell so that you get notified of any new videos that I publish. And today we're going to be talking about Home Assistant and integrating it with Alex A. This is something when I put out my Home Assistant video about a month ago, I'm only about a month in using Home Assistant. And uh, when I put out that video, I got a lot of comments from you guys that said, yeah, you'd really like to see how uh, to integrate it with uh, Alex A. Now, it also works with Google Home, but I'm not a Google Home user, so I can't say anything about that. Now, most of the videos you look on this topic, they're gonna say you need to pay a subscription to Home Assistant Cloud, also known as Nabucasa. Well, I guess I'm cheap. And I also like a challenge. And if you're cheap and like a challenge, then uh, you're probably gonna go down this rabbit hole as well. And uh, one of the things that you'll see is a common way to do it is to create an Amazon developer account and, and use a Lambda function and all this kind of rigmarole that requires really a you know master's in computer programming. I don't have that. Even though I do have a background in programming, I'm not gonna do that. I found an easier way, it took me five minutes to set up. In fact, probably in the time I've been talking about it, I could show you how to do it. So let's get to it. All right, here you can see I am connected to my local Home Assistant installation. Now, mine is a supervised Home Assistant, which means I use Home Assistant operating system on an Intel box, okay? I have a small, like an Intel Nook, it's actually a Celeron processor. If you want to learn more about how I installed Home Assistant in my house, I will put a link to the video up there and down in the video description below. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into settings and we're going to look under integrations. Now, when you click add integration, what you're going to do is search for Hue. Now, there's Philips Hue, which is, is if you have Philips Hue devices in your house and a Philips Hue hub, you can do that integration here. But we're actually going to look at this one here called Emulated Hue. And you can see it has the Home Assistant icon there because this is built-in functionality. And if you hover over here, it says it needs manual configuration. Click on that, open the documentation, and I suggest you read this because there are some caveats, there are limitations in this, but for my purposes, it worked perfectly and it might work for yours too. So one of the things is, there's a, there's a disclaimer here about Google Home. Again, I'm not working with Google Home, I'm only working with Alex A and it worked for me. Your mileage may vary. The other thing is here, it says there's a bunch of notes, but this one says it's recommended to have a static IP address to the computer running home assistant. Now, everybody's router is gonna be a little bit different. I use Unify in my house. And so if you come into my Unify, these are all the clients here. If I click on my home assistant client, you can see the IP address is 10.0.66.82. It is on my untrusted network. What that means is I have a separate VLAN for all of my IoT devices, and um, that keeps them completely separate from any of my computers, my NAS, my phones, any device that I want to protect, I put in my trusted network. The untrusted devices go in the untrusted network, and that way if there's any malware or anything on one of my IoT devices, it's not going to infect any of my computers. They are completely separate. And if you want to learn more about how I did that, I will put a link to my Unify video up there where I went through a complete home network tour. But anyway, when we come into the settings here for Home Assistant, you can see there's just this flip, this little switch here called fixed IP. And that means this IP address is the one that that device is always going to get, even if my network is rebooted. Now, most of the integrations and features in Home Assistant in 2023, this year, 
they are all accessible through nice, pretty user interfaces. That is not the case with this integration here. Emulated Hue has to be done in your config.yaml file. There's all description in here on the various configuration variables that you can put in, and they even show a sample configuration here. So let's go over to Home Assistant and I'll show you exactly what I used. All right, to edit my YAML file, I'm gonna go into Studio Code Server. There's different ways to do this. You can do it manually if you want to, but Studio Code Server, in my opinion, is easy because it formats it correctly and it provides color coding and things like that. So this is my configuration.yaml file. And in order to put this in, what we have to do, it, and this is described right in this document here in the emulated hue document, right? So the code, the keyword that we have to put here is emulated hue, and then it indents automatically for me. And the type I'm gonna put in here is Alex A. Now I have to put my host IP address, which is the IP address of my home assistant installation. And you'll have to know the IP address of yours, but that's what goes in there. The listen port has to be 80. So that's what I'm putting in, listen port 80. Expose by default, I set to false. If this is true, it means that all of your devices in Home Assistant will become exposed to Alex A. I didn't want that. I wanna control which ones are, are um, accessible. I wanted to kind of keep order. I only need a couple of them, so that's why I'm gonna do it this way. The next is the entities keyword. This is where I'm gonna actually start listing out what devices I want Alex A to be able to control. One of the first ones I'm gonna do is my kitchen lights. So this is the first entity that I wanted to put out there, and this is called my kitchen scene controller, and I'm gonna give it a name of kitchen. So I'm gonna be able to say, Alex A, turn on the kitchen, and it will turn on that device. And it's a switch that is known as kitchen scene controller. Now let me just add a couple more that I'm actually gonna copy and paste. Now, what I've done here is I've also added an, a light for my island dimmer, and I just call that island. And then I add another one here, an input Boolean, which is a helper that I have called sleeping. And that one I'm not really going to voice control. I'm gonna use that from a routine because I have a good night routine and a good morning routine through Alex A. And so that will enable me to actually integrate so that Home Assistant knows when we're in bed and sleeping. So I could turn certain lights on and off depending upon, you know, when I wake up or when I go to bed. Okay, I realized I had typed things in and I had some problems with my indentation, but now it is set the way that it's supposed to be and I'm gonna come over and restart Home Assistant. I go into settings, system, and up here there's a little power button, restart Home Assistant. Okay, Home Assistant has started, and now I am ready to move on to the next step. So we're done with our Home Assistant. Now what I'm gonna do is actually open up my Alex A app on my phone. All I'm gonna do is ask her to detect devices. Alexa, detect devices. Starting discovery. This will take a few moments. Power on your new devices now. And if needed, put them in pairing mode. Okay, this is gonna take a few minutes, but then it'll come back with the devices that it finds. I found and connected three new devices, including lights. Try saying, turn off sleeping. Okay, so here you can see that it added those three new devices at the top of my list, and it says new device. So, and by the way, I don't have the Philips Hue skill enabled because it requires me to link to a Philips Hue account, which I don't have. So all I did was discover devices and it found them. So let's do this. Let me go into the kitchen device and you can see power is off. If I click the power button, you can see that the kitchen lights go on on my dashboard there. And same way I can do with the island. I'm gonna try that and the island lights have gone on. And that one is a dimmer. I actually have a brightness control in here too. So it understands that it's a dimmer, which is really pretty cool. 
And then of course the last one is just uh, the sleeping, which you can see I have a sleeping uh, indicator right here on my dashboard. So if I click power is on, you can see that one went to sleeping. And if I click it here, it should go power is off in the Alex A app. Now let's give it one test and make sure that I can voice control these things as well. Alexa, turn off the kitchen. Okay. Alexa, turn off the island. Okay. Now I don't intend to voice control sleeping. I'm going to put that in my routine. So, but the other ones I do intend to use my voice for. So if I'm watching TV and the lights are left on, I can tell her to turn off the lights for me without having to get up off the couch. So hey, if you made it this far, you probably liked the video and learned something. So give me a thumbs up because it really helps the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you in the next one.